Welcome back troglodytes to Would You Rock or Not. Today we're looking at one of those late 80s oddball models in a limited edition that I did not know existed until about two months ago when I saw these come up for sale. Now before we dive into these guitars, I'm guessing most of my viewers have never even seen one of these guitars, except for maybe a quick photo I've shown of one on a few of my videos. This is known as the Gibson US-1. This guitar is essentially a super strat, and I used to own one of these. This was one of my personal collection guitars because I just thought it was so cool. A strat from Gibson. They made them in cherry sunburst, blonde, as well as black. Now this guitar was absolute garbage, unplayable. Now it's not the model, I think it's just this particular one. As you can see here in the case there was mildew in it. This thing reeked. The finish was pretty well destroyed due to moisture damage and the action was ridiculously high on this thing. It was not a playable guitar, so I maybe played this thing maybe three or four times before just always storing it away. It was a pretty guitar, it was striking, it's just this exact one was not very good. These guitars were made right after Gibson was purchased by its current day owner. They were trying to go after the Super Strat sales, but they were just way too late. So when these things came out, nobody really paid any attention to them. But these guitars had ebony fretboards, and I liked that, and they had mahogany necks, and they have kind of a mixture of woods for their bodies. Gibson advertised these as chromite bodies, which is basically a fancy term for balsa wood. In order to make these guitars really lightweight, they basically took mahogany bodies and they chambered them out. However, instead of having those chambered holes open, they filled them with this balsa wood. This way you still have a solid body guitar, but it's just not as heavy as a solid mahogany body. These guitars came with two bridge options. You could have a Kaler tremolo unit, or you can have an ABR-1 bridge and traditional tailpiece. These ranged from really nice flame tops to really nice quilt tops. And they really are kind of tricky to find even to this day, especially a really spectacular example. Now it's the weird and bizarre Gibsons that I've always liked, and I really liked this model, not because it was a Gibson Strat, but because it had this funky Explorer-like headstock here. It's this giant meat cleaver type thing. Some of the Gibson bases had a similar one. However, I liked that it had this Gibson emblem on it. It's very reminiscent of a 50s flying V. So now that we know a little bit more about the Gibson US-1, let's look at this. Apparently Gibson commissioned 20 of these guitars to be built, and James O'Connor is the one that spray painted them. These are World War II Air Force scenes that this guy did, and I guess they're all different. Now the seller is from Austria, and he has two of them out of the 20 made. So when I first saw these things get listed, I was like, you know, that's kind of cool. Super Strat era, you got some war scenes. That's interesting. But if I was going to buy one, which one would I want to buy? I don't know a lot about World War II. I'm not like a history buff as far as that. I'm not really into the vibe of these guitars. But which one do you guys like better if you had to choose one? I don't want any comments saying I don't want either one. I want you to choose one. Do you want number one? Or do you want number two? Personally, I think I am leaning more towards number one, mainly because I like this pattern right here. It reminds me of like an old NES game. And I just think these planes look a little bit cooler and you got the twinkly stars, but I do like this red sun right here on this one. And here's more of a close up of number two. You can definitely see that this one's been played. The gold has been worn off a little bit there. I also kind of like the square design and it's kind of cool that this one's kind of shooting stuff at this other one. So these are definitely very interesting guitars. They have a humbucker in the bridge and two Gibson single coils. I don't remember this guitar sounding particularly fantastic, but then again, I didn't play it too much but I hate the control layout for these guitars. 
These little switches right here, they activate the pickups. So this one, if you turn it on, your humbucker's on. This one, you turn it on, your middle's on. And then your neck pickup is adjusted by this one. But what is unique about that is you can have all three on, or you can just have the bridge middle on, or the bridge neck on. You can have any combination of pickups that you want. Now, as far as value for this type of guitar, usually you can pick up a nice US one, like the very top of the market is 15, and you've gotta be waiting a long time to get that. Now, a limited edition like this, I think if people knew about these guitars, they would be worth about what the seller is wanting. But the problem is, I don't think anybody's ever heard of this World War II edition US one. So that's kind of why I think these haven't sold yet. I think it also would have been nice if they would have decked out the backs of the guitars as well with some different type of scene. Now the artist did sign every one of these. If we zoom in here, you can see his signature. It says the number of 20 made in 1987 by James O'Connor. Now, the only thing I don't like about this version of the US one is the headstock. They ruined it for me. They did a gold Gibson silkscreen logo, and I hate that. Aesthetics are very important to me on a guitar that I'm going to play. If I don't like a look of a guitar, I'm not as motivated to play it. And this is one of the biggest turnoffs for me is the gold Gibson silk screen. The whole reason why I really enjoyed the US-1 series is the giant flying V plaque that just says Gibson. That way, nobody doubts what brand your guitar is because it's just huge and gaudy. It's a little over the top, but I like it because it's a little bit crazy. Unfortunately, they took that away on this limited edition run. And I think that really is what has stopped me from even trying to make an offer on one of these guitars. I do like that they put the US-1 on the truss rod cover for these though. They did not do that on the original run. The only question left, would you rock a Gibson US-1 or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. And regardless of how you feel about these guitars, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.